Let's talk more about factors affecting susceptibility to autoimmune disorders. And so in the previous video, we talked about uh, genetic factors, especially HLA genes that might increase the risk for autoimmune disorders. Now let's talk about environmental factors that could also increase the risk of um, being diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder. And in this case, we're talking about pathogens that trigger an autoimmune response. How can a pathogen trigger an autoimmune response? So one example is um, a certain strain of Streptococcus bacteria, which infects the throat of many individuals and causes things like strep throat. If that um, pathogen isn't cleared uh, quickly enough, maybe not given antibiotics, um, the immune system is gonna have to keep fighting it and fighting it, and maybe the immune system recognizes the pathogen using antibodies. So there's an antibody response against some molecule found on the surface of this streptococcal bacteria. And that's great in combating the infection. Uh, what is not great is that some strains of streptococcal bacteria have a molecule on the surface that elicits an immune response, and that molecule shares epitopes with host molecules. So on the right there, I've drawn some host cells, and on their surface is a molecule that is similar in three-dimensional structure to molecules that elicit an immune response um, on the surface of the bacteria. So in the course of generating an antibody that has an antigen binding domain that binds the surface of the bacteria, um, we also now have an antibody that also has some affinity for molecules on the surface of our cells or in the soluble, um, a soluble molecule, for example. So it could be a type 2 or type 3 reaction here. Um, it is known that some infections due to streptococcal strains could result in what's called a rheumatic fever. It involves having a sort of normal bacterial infection, fighting the bacterial infection, and those antibodies then being cross-reacted with host molecules found in heart tissue, kidney tissue, and in the joints. And so these antibodies, which uh, were generated to um, recognize the pathogen, now recognize molecules in these tissues. And when the antibodies bind autoantigens in these tissues, they're going to induce complement activation, inflammation, opsonization, um, the things that antibodies have in their infector function. And so this is known as rheumatic fever, and it can be life-threatening. It can cause heart failure, it can cause kidney failure, and it can cause uh, debilitating arthritis. And again, due to the fact that there's some overlap between pathogens and their epitopes and host epitopes. Uh, this is referred to as molecular mimicry. So the molecules on the surface of the pathogens are similar to the molecules found in the host. And uh, the antibodies that generate against one react against the other. So this is one example that is well known of molecular mimicry. There are other examples which are believed to be the case. Uh, the evidence is somewhat there. Um, so again, the immune system recognizes and uh, unleashes an attack against the pathogen, and it just so happens that the molecules that are recognized against the pathogen overlap with molecules that are present in the host. So another example of this is individuals who suffer from Lyme disease. So the pathogen that causes Lyme disease um, seems to share some three-dimensional structures with molecules that are found in joints. Um, so generating an immune response to the pathogen also tends to generate immune response in the joints leading to arthritis. And this is why some individuals who suffer from Lyme, degrees, Lyme disease uh, suffer chronic arthritis after the pathogen is removed from the body by the immune system. There are other um, autoimmune disorders which are believed possibly to be linked to pathogens. Um, not very clear link. Maybe there's a correlation. Causation hasn't been established. But um, some scientists hypothesize that uh, type 1 diabetes could be due to um, molecular mimicry. There's some infection that occurs uh, early in life, and in some individuals, um, their immune system attacks the pathogen, and then that attack also attacks uh, the beta cells of the pancreas. So there's some sort of overlap between the pathogen 
and the pancreatic beta cells, causing the immune system to destroy those cells. Um, another example is multiple sclerosis, which involves the destruction of uh, the cells responsible for creating myelin uh, wrapped around axon, um, um, the axons of neurons. And it is believed there's some possible link between infections and the immune system combating the infection and then also attacking the cells that produce these myelin sheaths. So there's some evidence that Pathogens can trigger an immune response. Lastly, let's talk about the environmental factors that are non-pathogenic. It's known that individuals who smoke uh, have higher rates of autoimmune disorders. Uh, for example, rheumatoid arthritis. And so um, there are mechanisms that have been worked out that have um, deduced that individuals who have taken uh, cigarette smoke are causing changes to the molecules in their body via the smoke, the heat, the molecules that they're taking in, and once those molecules change, they elicit an immune response. So the immune system now believes these molecules are pathogenic and unleashes an attack, and a lot of these attacks um, concentrate in the joints, leading to arthritis. Um, trauma could possibly lead to autoimmune disorders, and there is, again, some evidence that individuals who suffer from concussions or other brain uh, physical brain injuries have higher rates of multiple sclerosis, though possibly the trauma would unleash an immune response in the nervous system, um, and that immune response would be targeting cells that are wrapped around the axons of neurons and uh, destroying those cells. So there's some evidence that correlates brain trauma uh, or concussions with an increased risk of multiple sclerosis. These are some examples of factors that affect uh, susceptibility to autoimmune diseases. There are more, um, and these are just a few.